This is lesson 2.5, and this is all about the different kinds of content you can get to through using Google in its normal mode. As you know, we've got web content, we've talked about image content, a little bit about video content, but there's more. So what we're going to talk about is the different kinds of ways you can get to search that different kind of spaces of content. You know already that we'll search regular web content but we will also blend in things like videos and images and so on. But we can also search just within each of those different kinds of content. So as you know, we have web pages, we have images, we've got videos, including YouTube, but including more than just YouTube. We also have something called Scholar, which is our collection, our index of the scholarly literature, which also includes things like legal opinion. We have Google Patents, we have Google News, we have Google Books, and so on and so on. Let's talk about how to actually go find stuff in each of those content areas. So let's start with what is probably the world's best known, best loved search, which is for cats. So I'm going to do a search for cats. And as you can see, at the top, as I mentioned, we blend different kinds of content together. So we have at the very top different videos. On the right-hand side, the knowledge panel about cats. But we've also got the regular web stuff over here on the left-hand side, and about halfway down, more videos. People also ask, you, that's the usual web stuff. But if you go back to the top and click on the tab labeled images, you'll see all the Google images that we've discovered by crawling about cats. We've talked a little, a little bit about the tabs across the top, for example, anime cats, baby cats, and so on. But we also have the ability to click on the videos tab, which you see right here, and now we get just videos of cats. If you do the search just in regular Google, you'll get videos included with the regular web results. But if you click just on the videos tab, you get nothing but videos, just as we saw nothing but images in the images tab. And of course, if you click on news, you get news about cats. You get shopping about cats just by clicking on the, the shopping tab. You can also find, let's go back to home. We'll redo our search for, say, dogs this time. And I want to show you a secret to other places inside of a Google search, which is this thing called More. If you click on More, you'll get a different set of options. So these are sort of one level down, but they're important. Because here I can click, for example, on Google Books about dogs. And so here we now get nothing but the index that Google has made about Google Books that we've scanned and we found from uh, digital sources and so on. And so there are roughly 115 million books about, about dogs. Who knew? But as you can see, this is actually quite a long list. And when we talk about books in detail, I'll show you some more about how to filter by, by various properties of these books. But right now, I just want to show you a little bit more about more. So let's go back to more. Now that we've clicked on books, let's see what else we have. Well, we have finance, we have flights, more shopping, and so on. So let me look for books about cats. Do it that way. So now we get more books about cats, and uh, there are 71 million books about cats. I don't know why it's different, why there are fewer books about cats, but that seems to be the case. But let's go back to more. Remember more? So now at the very bottom of more is this tab called personal, which allows me, if I click on it, to search my personal content, which in this case is going to be images about my cat. This is my beautiful cat. And it's important for you to notice that this is only your photos. So in essence, what we're doing is saying, you can search all of the universe, but you can also search just your photos by name. So you can search for, for example, names of people in your family, if you've tagged them, or by location. My point is, you can search all of this content. You can select the different content types by using the tabs at the very top. So now let's talk about Google Patents. The way I get to Google Patents, since it's not listed there under the More option, is I search for Google Patents. I know, obvious, right? But that's the way I actually do it. And that's the way I recommend you do it, because you should not remember the URL. It's faster than bookmarking it and looking through all your bookmarks. I just search for Google Patents. And you click on the first result. And we are now in the mode of searching just for patents. So let's do that topic again. Let's search for patents about cats, because you will discover there are, in fact, a bunch of different patents about cats. Who knew? And on the left-hand side, you have some filter 
information here. You can search for synonyms or check dates and so on, check the inventor, uh, and things like that. Now, that's good, but if you're really a patent searcher, you probably want pretty fine-grained control over your patent search. So what I do is go back to Google Home and I search for patents advanced search. Now the reason I'm doing that is to get to this page, which gives me really a lot of options. So here you can search for particular patents by number, patents by title, patents with a particular inventor name, a signee name, and so on and so on. So if you're a patent person, say you're uh, an inventor or a legal attorney or something, uh, you can actually go and get information this way. But we'll cover that in an advanced class. I just wanted to point that out to you right now. So it's important to know about patents that they're English only. However, we have recently incorporated lots of patents from EU. I believe it's pretty close to complete, but it may be a few, few percent missing. But this inco incorporates all of the United States, Japan, Canada, and so on. So EU plus a few other countries. So it's an incredibly great resource for you if you're trying to do discovery or you're trying to do patent follow-up. Now let's talk about Google Scholar. Scholar is the collection of the scholarly literature, that is, articles that are published in well-received, well-respected journals, conferences, books, and so on. It basically represents the output of the scientific community. So if you want to find something with really high authority published in a well-known journal, Google Scholar is your friend. And again, you can type in the URL directly, but guess what I'm going to do? Google Scholar. And this first hit is it. So I go there, and now if we do a search, we're not searching books, we're not searching images, we're not searching video, we're just searching what we've collected from the scholarly literature. So let's search that cats thing again. And what you'll see here is a bunch of articles about cats, about 1.8 million of them. People have written a lot about cats. Uh, now some of this is going to be a little technical, like the very first article here is the evaluation of the diagnostic criteria for ankylosing spondylitis. That may not be your cup of tea, but there are people who care about that a lot. In particular, this little number here cited by 5,324, that's the number of other articles that refer to this one. So this is probably a decent article if you're interested in ankylosing spondylitis. My point is that this is a really great resource if you're trying to search for things about cats or say coral bleaching or climate change or whatever your topic is. This is a great way to index to search just that literature. Now one of the things to know about Scholar is it has also a great deal of legal content. Now the legal content is only in the English interfaces. So if you're in Germany and you're using German as your default language, you'll have to switch it to English in order to be able to search for it. Uh, it also is only the collection of US case law that's primarily of interest in former British colonies, uh, any place that's inherited to the British common law system. Now, as I mentioned, only US legal opinions are included, but let me show you this in detail. Again, search Google Scholar. But this time, I'm going to do something slightly different. So here we are. I'm going to this time search for cats again, but instead of just searching the scholarly literature, I'm going to click here on this button for case law. And this now allows me to then filter by federal courts or California courts or whatever. But my point is you can actually now search case law about cats. I do my query, and here we go. Uh, cats appears as the title and name of a company, uh, but if you search through here, there are in fact lots and lots of case law lots of legal opinions and so on about cats, the state versus 15 impounded cats. So it's an interesting resource, and in particular, if you're looking for a particular case, say Roe v. Wade, this is the fastest way I know to get to that amount of online content. So this is a great way to do this. And again, on the left-hand side, you can filter by different time spaces or by case law, or federal courts, or California courts, or you can select the court you want to search from. So here you go. Really great for searching case law in the United States. Now what I'd like you to do is now that you know about all these different kinds of resources within Google, is go ahead and do the next activity and explore a little bit to see what you can find in each of these different spaces. It's an interesting 
thing to compare what you find in videos versus images versus news on any particular topic. So go ahead and explore that.